Hello everyone and welcome to this video on getting started with the Hilt dependency injection framework. Now before we get started I just want to mention two things. First of all this, this video is very hands-on so I'm not going to show you too much theory. Um, I want us to go into Android Studio and get started right away implementing Hilt. Um, the second thing is that this uh, video is part of a larger course that I have built um, around Hilt, uh, around the Hilt library. So um, I have a lot more information on that one. Check out the description if you're interested to find out more. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to um, open up Android Studio and create a new project. And I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call this Hilt Intro for introduction, right? Um, I'm going to click Finish and let that build. So the first thing that we need to do um, is to set up Hilt in our project, okay? We need to update the build.gradle file. I'm gonna open the project level for now. And we need to type here some dependencies, right? You have these in the description box down below. You don't need to type them out, but you can pause the video and type them out if you want. All right, so here, let me show you what you need to update. So first of all, in the project level build file, I've added the class path to um, the Hilt Gradle plugin. Then I've added to the other build Gradle file, the module version. Um, so I've added the three plugins here at the top. Make sure you have those three. And then down below in the dependencies, I've added these two, okay? so go ahead and add those as well. Also, make sure that you have the compile option Java 1.8 here in the, um, in the Android block. Okay, so make sure you have that. Once you've added that, go ahead and sync now, and that should uh, build your project. If you get any errors, it means you just typed something wrong here. All right, so that's done and dusted. Let's go ahead and start implementing um, Hilt in our application. So the first thing we need to do is Hilt requires us to have an application file in our project, okay? Um, no matter if we have any functionality in that file, we still need it uh, to exist. So here I have a new Kotlin file and I'm gonna call it Hilt intro application. Okay. And let's extend the application class from Android. Now, the first annotation that we need here is going to be Hilt Android app. Okay, this allows Hilt to know that this application uses the library. Since we've added an application file, we need to add it to the manifest as well. So open up Android manifest. And here we're gonna add name Hilt intro application. Okay, so that's all for this. Let's just go ahead also and add a constant val tag here because we're going to print some messages to the log cat and we want to filter by a specific tag. This is going to be, let's say, hilt intro tag. The name here doesn't matter. We just need to have something so that we can filter on that. All right, so let's go ahead and create a class that we can inject in our main activity. We're not gonna have a lot of functionality in that class, we're just gonna show you how to use it, how to inject it, okay? So let's go ahead and create a file. I'm gonna call this network service, okay? And here I'm gonna use at inject constructor. So what this does is basically it allows Hilt to be able to inject this file, since we have no parameters here, it will be able to inject this file wherever we need it, okay? I'm just gonna create a function log, and here I'm gonna say log.d tag that we've created earlier, and then I'm gonna say network service and print this, okay? Just to have something to the console so that we can check that this was uh, correctly injected. Okay, now let's go ahead and inject this as a field in our main activity. So if we want something injected in our main activity, the first thing we need to do is annotate the class with at 
Android entry point. Then we can go ahead and inject something here. So I'm going to say at inject late init var service as a network service. You can see that we no longer need to provide an instance since we have the inject annotation. And then we already have access to it. So there, then we can simply say service.log. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run our code. And while that's building, we're just going to need to wait for that. But the log cat needs to be filtered. So here, um, let me just copy the tag that we've provided. And I'm going to filter it here. Okay. Um, right. So there we go. The message has been printed. So network service, and we get the instance. So that means that our main activity has a reference to network service now because we can access its functionality. So this is the first case that I wanted to show you. It's the constructor injection. Um, so Hilt has access to this uh, class through the constructor injection, and it, it, in, it injects it through the network service, through the uh, field injection here in main activity. Now, before we finish, I want to show you another type of injection that we have in Hilt. Okay, and this is probably more common in practice. And that is for types that you cannot simply provide constructor injection. Okay, uh, most types have some sort of um, parameters or builders to um, create the instance. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to create a class that follows the builder pattern. So it's not very straightforward to um, instantiate. And then I'm going to use that class to inject it in main activity. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new file here. I'm going to call this network adapter. Okay, now the network adapter needs to follow the builder pattern. So let's go ahead and create a class builder inside the existing class. And let's add here, uh, let's say var protocol as a nullable string equals null. And we need to um, hide the setter, so private set. And then I'm going to add one more variable here. Host of type string equals null. Also hide the setter. Okay, now let's add a few functions. So protocol, protocol, of type string equals apply because we want to return the instance of builder here. Apply this dot protocol equals protocol. Okay, and we're going to do the same for host. So let me duplicate that. I'm going to say host, host of type string, apply this dot host equals host. Okay, and inside the builder, we need one more function that's going to be the build function. That's going to simply return me a network adapter of this builder. Okay. Now let's go back to network adapter. I'm going to create a private constructor that takes a builder of type builder. Do not import any of these files. Just leave it as it is and it will take the class inside of the network adapter. Okay. Here I have the same variables private this time val protocol of type nullable string. We're going to not give it a value for now. We'll see why. And then private val host of type string. We're going to use an init block. Okay. And we're going to say this dot protocol equals protocol. Uh, sorry, builder dot protocol. Okay, and this dot host equals builder dot host. Okay, so that is our builder pattern. Let's go ahead and create a function log. Okay, and here we're simply going to say log dot d. We're going to have our tag. And we're going to say, uh, we're going to print out the value. So network adapter of, uh, we're going to print out the uh, instance, we're going to have protocol. 
and I'm going to print here protocol. And then we're going to have host also print the host. There we go. So we have our class. Now this is not easily um, implemented through Hilt. We need to provide the implementation. Okay. So for that purpose, we're going to create a Hilt module. Okay. That's what modules do. I'm going to create a network module here. And here I'm going to provide the implementation. So there's a few things that we need to do. First of all, we're going to annotate this class with module. We're also going to annotate this class with install in to tell Hilt where we want the installation. Here we want to provide the type of component uh, that we want. In um, Dagger, if you know your Dagger, here we need to provide a component as well. However, Hilt provides us standard components that we can use. Okay, so here I'm going to say activity component colon colon class. That's because I want to inject this network module in the activity class. Okay, if I had multiple activities, then I can inject it in any of the existing activities. Okay, and now we need to provide a function that will give us the instance of our network adapter. So here I'm going to have a function provide network adapter that will give us a network adapter. And here we instantiate it. So I'm going to say return network adapter dot builder. Okay, I'm going to have protocol, it's going to be let's say HTTPS, the values here don't matter. Host is going to be let's say google.com. And then I'm going to call dot build. Okay, one more thing we need to do is we need to annotate this provide network adapter with at provides to let Hilt know that we uh, are providing the network adapter type. Okay, that's all we need to do uh, to set up our Hilt infrastructure. Now, if we go to main activity, it's quite simple to use that. We're going to say at inject late init var um, adapter of type network adapter. Okay, now we have that when we run. So that means we can call adapter.log. Let's go ahead and run our code. And that is all there is to it. You can see how easy it is to actually set up um, Hilt for types that you do not own or that are not straightforward to implement. Okay, let's have a look in logcat. And then we get the instance of network adapter here. Okay, we get the protocol and the google.com uh, host that we set. So that's it. Of course, there's a lot more to Hilt um, because we have different types of classes, different types of components. Um, we One of the main advantages of Hilt is obviously unit testing. Okay, so that uh, can show you, Hilt can facilitate unit testing in your applications because it separates uh, logic into its um, right components, right? So you can if you have a separate component, then you can test that separately and not have it tied to any other part of your code. So very, very useful. But in this video, I wanted to give you a quick introduction for you to be able to get started uh, using Hilt in your applications and in your code. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you want to find out more, have a look down below in the description. I've uh, put a link there to a uh, course that I've developed to give you more information about Hilt. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.